I'm Mark Callan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. This is Mr. Saltwater Tank, RUF, raw, uncut, first impressions, the show where I call it as I see it with products that I haven't seen before. And disclaimer, this is a second look at the Hanna Magnesium Checker. Why am I taking a second look at it? Well, the first round, they found out that some of the reagents that they included with the first batch of checkers, they had expired and were giving people extra high readings. So Hanna, admitting their mistake, which I think is cool, pulled the checkers and they said, hey, if you bought one of the first gens, let us know, we'll send you the new reagents when they're out. In my case, I went ahead and grabbed a new Hanna Magnesium Checker. This has the new reagents already in it. Now, if you're buying the Hanna Magnesium Checker from us here at saltwateraquarium.com, we only sell the new ones. And it says right in the product description, so you know you're getting the new Hanna Checker. If you have the old Hanna Checker for magnesium, all you gotta do is write to Hanna, there's a link at the bottom of the screen, fill out the form, and they'll make sure they get you the right reagents. Okay, let's jump into this thing and see what's changed and see if I can get an accurate reading. Here we go. This means powdered reagent. Okay, the old version had two liquid reagents. Liquids to me are easier than powders. But uh, if this is what we're doing now to make it more accurate, okay, this is what Hannah gave us. So if you open one of these up and you have two liquids, that means it's the old one. The new one with the more accurate reagent because it has better shelf life in a powder form, it's gonna have a powder and it's gonna have a liquid. So keep that in mind. All right, now I've already put the battery in this thing. If you're buying it new, it's gonna have a battery here. You need a, a quick little Phillips head to put the battery in there. It's easy. And something else that Hannah's doing now that I like, you have a quick reference and you have full reference here as well. So if you wanna read all the instructions, it's this one and you want the quick one, it's this one. Now I would recommend reading the full instructions. I went ahead and did it because there's some notes in here like you wanna use the black syringe with black markings and they want you to use the blue one. So I'd recommend reading this and then going back. Once you're really familiar with it, then you can use a quick reference. So turn it on, C1. This wants four mils of reagent A. Something else that Hannah wants you to do, if you're not paying attention on it in the photos, again, that's why I was saying read the long version. They really want you to use the syringe tips and they now have O-rings, so it's a better fit. So don't just use the syringe you want to use the tip with it. So it says pull up four mils of reagent A. So you can see this is a new test because there's a bottle. Hopefully that comes off. Thank goodness, sometimes those things don't come off. Drives me crazy. All right, four mils of this, pull it up. Now keep in mind when you use the tip, you're not gonna have full amount of reagent up in here. Notice that it's like half full right there. That's because there's liquid in the tip. Hannah has accounted for that. So don't freak out. It says you need four mils, but there's only two up in the syringe. The amount of air that's in here is equal to what's in the tip. So you're good to go. Okay, grab your cuvette. We're gonna stick that down in there, blow it out. Something else Hannah now says in the directions. They wanna make sure you have all the reagent out of the tip. So notice there's a little bit of liquid there. So I'm just gonna pull some air back in here, push it down, make sure that's totally empty. All right, that's legit. Done that, I'm gonna put the cap on because I always knock these things over. Put the cap on my reagent before I knock that over. Now it says use the blue hash marked syringe, put the tip on and go get five mils of tank water, so I'll do that and be right back. I've got five mils of tank water here. Oh, and if you push too hard, you blow off the cap, the, the tip, like I just did. Go slow, don't push too hard. Now I get to start over. Here's my cuvette. I'm gonna put that right in the top. I'm gonna hold it, my fingers here, and use my other hand to gently, but firmly, press out all the amount that's in the top. If you have any liquid left in the tip, pull the plunger back and push it out with the air. Now we turn it over five times. You don't want to shake. Just gently turn it over because you don't want bubbles. Then 
something else that's important. I like to make sure these are clean. You can wipe it on your shirt. Ideally, you would have a lint-free towel, but look, your towel, your shirt works just fine. I'm gonna put it in here, press the button, and it's gonna zero out. Now, I'm not gonna hold it at an angle because I wanna make sure it gets the right zero. So let that go through. All right, now we're at C2. Now we get to do everyone's favorite thing, the packets. What I like to do is just flick the top of them. You can cut out, that sounds nice. I just tear it gently across the top here. Then open it up. This is where fingernails come in helpful if you have them. Open that up. I like to stick it there so it doesn't fall over because I'm good at knocking things over. Then I've got this thing. You just push the ends together so you get a nice little funnel. Ooh, it's black. That's cool. Make sure it all goes in. That came out a lot easier than that white powder stuff. Put that off to the side. Then it says turn it over 18 times for about 30 seconds. Notice I'm not shaking it. I'm just turning it over 30 seconds or 18 times, whatever is easiest for you to measure. Make sure there's no solids at the bottom of it when you're done. Okay, I don't see any granules on the bottom of this. We're gonna stick it in here. You can either wait three minutes and then press the button and get a reading, or I like to press and hold the button. It starts a countdown timer. Then I go to my smartwatch and start a three minute clock and I let it roll. I'll be back in three minutes and we'll see the result. All right, here's my reading, 1535. I'm gonna go run a reading on my Neptune Systems Trident and I'll run a manual reading uh, with another test kit and we'll compare results. All right, I ran my test. What are the results? Hand and magnesium checker said 1535 parts per million. Neptune Systems Trident, which I recently calibrated, gave me a reading of 1486 parts per million. And the manual test that I did with a NIOS test kit that's the old color ones where you had to compare colors on a color card. That gave me a reading of 1500. So 1486, 1500, 1535. That's all within the error ranges of all those tests. So I have faith in this thing. It's giving me a close reading. Now, here's something that people get bent out of shape. They're like, well, this told you 1535, and that said 1486, and that said 1500. Therefore, they're all wrong, because if they're accurate, they'd all give you the same reading. Not necessarily, remember there's ranges of accuracy on any test kit. For example, this hand and magnesium checker says within 5% of the reading, that's about 75 parts per million. So that reading coming out of this 1535 could go down to about 1460-ish up to above 1600. Any test kit is gonna give you an accuracy range. In this case, all those tests fell within the accuracy range of the hand and magnesium checker. Now, one thing that I thought about as I ran the test, the first time I ran it with magnesium checker, I thought, this seems like a lot of steps. But when I went downstairs and I ran the same magnesium test with my NIOS one, it was actually easier to do it on the HANA magnesium checker because I'm just measuring things out, I'm putting it in. It was very quick, as opposed to scooping out liquids, adding drops until I saw a color change. So at first, I thought there are a lot of steps in this, but once I ran it the second time, super simple. I mean, by the time you do it the third time, you're gonna have it by memory, but there is that little cheat card in there, which is nice. So this is going in my kit. Remember, if you're buying your HANA magnesium checker from us here at saltwaterquarium.com, we only sell the new ones. So you know you're getting the most up-to-date one. And if you have the old one with the reagents, HANA will replace those free of charge. Just go to the link at the bottom of the website and that will take you there, your film info, and you're good to go. So. More HANA checkers for my test kit box that I take with me when I service tanks and my tanks because even though I have an automatic checker on my system, I still manually run a magnesium, calcium, alkalinity, nitrate, and phosphate test once a week just to keep up with things. I like it. Thanks, HANA, for adding this to the mix. Another thing that home office isn't getting back. <laughs>